viewers all over the world. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy your time. Time with Jesus. Wonderful. Hallelujah. As I look at true believers, many Christians, I do not forget the many insults. I do not forget the many persecutions. I do not forget the many temptations they endure to maintain their Christian life. Are you with me? Injustice, pain, the opposition. They endure to maintain their work with the Lord. Anything close to Jesus receive attacks. I think I'm going to build my message this morning around this. Hallelujah. I'm going to call it the secret of true believers. Because it's our secret. People don't know. They see it as pain. They see it as a punishment. They see it as like what Job's wife said to him. I mean, you say you are a, you're a friend of God. God loves you so much. Why are you going through all this pain, all this agony? Job said to wife, why are you saying this? Someone gave you butter, salad, and later now gave you bitter leaf. Why can't you take it? We have been eating the salad for so long, and when bitter leaf now comes, we should take it. Life is both sides, positive and negative. Hallelujah. So let's take our reading from uh, the book of James. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. That is our reading. But other book you will find this that will help you. Second Corinthians, chapter 11. You take your reading from verse 23 to 29. Are you there? And there also the book of Matthew 10. Where he's taking your reading from 19 to 20. That will also help. In your reading. And the first Thessalonians chapter 5, and you take your reading from verse 1 to 10. That will also help. The secret of true believers, your secret, which you don't know that is your secret, is your weapon. Why is your weapon? We talk about it today. Hallelujah. James, that is chapter one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, greetings, trial and temptation. This is all what we are hearing today. Trial and temptation, consider it pure joy. But today we consider it sorrow. We consider it crisis. We consider it as just name, pain. But the Bible is here, consider it pure joy. Can you consider trial, pure joy? Insult, pure joy. Persecution, pure joy. The opposition, pure joy. This is what the Bible is saying here. My brothers and sisters, Wherever you face trial of many kinds, of many kinds, wherever you face the trial of many kinds, me either poverty could be trial, your trial, ashu could be your trial, sickness, disease, um, stagnation, just mention, okay? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work 
so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So you take your time, read from that verse, from verse 4 down. And I've given you those books that will give this message today. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you. I say, let your word in our hearts. So you should be ready right now, the prayer points given to you last two to three Sunday. Lord, release my spirit to follow you. I have surrendered. Say to yourself, release my spirit, Lord, to follow you. I have surrendered. The importance of your heart, very, very important. Your heart must be at its best for God. Your heart must be at its best for God. And uh, your heart cannot be at its best without being spiritual. Your heart must be at its best because the spirit expresses itself through the heart. Tell your neighbor, the spirit of God expresses itself through my heart. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yes, the spirit of God expresses itself through your heart. That is why you must have freedom of your heart. Free heart. Labration. You need it. Because the spirit expresses itself through your heart. Can you see the connection of your heart? Your heart is a prayer room. A strong room. Strong room. Why is it secret? It's your secret. Can you hear? Let your trial be a joy. Hallelujah. In life, we do have this. We do have weeks, and we do have months and years that come with enormous challenges. That come with what? Challenges. That come with enormous challenges. Poverty, hatred, persecution, insult, and so on and so forth. What do we do as Christians when they come? Believers may have challenges, but our challenges are not like others. As a believer, you may have challenges. You may have just, you know what I mean by challenge? It could be sickness, could be poverty, could be this, could be that, could be that, could be that. But our challenges are not like others. It's to strengthen our desire and our determination for God. It's to improve us, not to impair us. What do we do as Christians when they come? The Bible says, wash and pray. In one of the verses I gave you, Wash and pray. Why can you watch and pray? Me, you must discipline your heart before prayer. You cannot watch for God without disciplining heart. Wash and pray means you must discipline your what? You must discipline your heart before prayer. How do we discipline our heart? Something that does not qualify for meditation 
does not qualify for conversation. I'm telling you the process. What are you meditating? What does not qualify for your heart does not qualify for your mouth. Are you with me? Tell your neighbor, what does not qualify for meditation does not qualify for conversation. Me, speak what you believe. Say what you believe. If I say stand up for prayer, if you don't believe, don't stand up. If I say sit down, if you don't believe, stand. But today, when I say stand up, hmm, man of God says stand up. You stand up, sir. Let us pray. You don't believe, you pray. In the name of Jesus. And you don't believe, you say amen. In Jesus' name. And you don't believe what I'm saying, you say amen. The whole thing has now become national attempt. Faith is not a hobby. We take our faith as hobby. Game. The hobby is... There is no alternative for our faith. How can we discipline our heart? We submit to panic. <laughs> and you say you are a Christian. When I say, hey, mm, there's lion somewhere there. You say, where? That's the question you ask me, where? And I say, there. Me hearing the, oh, huh? where's my bag? Where's my bag? From that moment, you will not close your eyes for prayer again. If I say, let us pray, you say, no, I cannot. Because lion is around, you have to, oh, in Jesus' name, amen. If lion come close, you say, Timmy Joshua, the prayer have not sent the lion away, it stayed very close. If lion now kick the door, boom, boom, you abandon me here. We should be still and not submit to war. Okay. Let us pray. Rise up and let us pray. Can you see? My brother is looking at the other brother. When are you stand up? We believe in majority. Instead of God's authority, let us stand up for prayer. Okay, good, 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 good. Sit down. <laughs> By what authority are you doing this? Authority that I put on suit. Authority that I'm standing in front of you. Let us respect this man. Let's stand up. That is it. If not, you don't believe what he say. We should be still and not submit to war. Panic. That is our problem. So a problem when they to pay your heart. Hey, mm, mm, mm. What's happened? Ah, the thing has started. What started? And begin to do the right thing. It is when you see and not panic, you can begin to do the right thing. You don't do the right thing in a panic moment. We should take control of, of our situation instead of being afraid. Take control. Instead of being what? Being afraid. Sometimes this car.
Listen to that. That sun hit you. It hit you. You must take control of your situation. Instead of being afraid. Because Satan himself, the cause of crisis, the cause of challenges, has been defeated. The cause of that challenge you are facing, poverty, sickness, disease, affliction, stagnation, temptation, persecution, the opposition, the cause, Satan, has been defeated. He has been defeated. <laughs> when adversity comes, as a true believer, welcome it. True believers greet adversity as a friend. Greet challenges as friend. Whatever it is, greet as friend. That you are a believer, you may have a future. You may have challenges, but your challenges are not like others. We must learn that there's value in, in the challenges. And the situation that looks impossible, there's value. There can be no promotion without examination. There's value in the situation looks impossible. That is why people like me can be here today. True believer must have determination not to listen to the panic of the moment. Determination not to listen to what? Panic of the moment. That should be our determination. Not to listen to the panic of the moment, but to find the quiet voice of cancer. The quiet voice of cancer. Pause and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say concerning the matter. That sickness may be to stop you away in order to prepare you for a new level in life. That stagnation may be to prepare you, to redirect you, to improve you. It's a transit point to connect you. Transit point. When you are going to a country, to country, you have a place you have to stop to connect your flight. That is the challenges. To connect you to 
the future you desire. Transit what? Transit point. When we listen to the Holy Spirit, He will protect us from the pitfalls of every enemy. Continuously pray in the Spirit and listen to His voice it will protect you from your daily challenges. can always run to in times of distress confusion and fear but when my enemy surrounds me father I know I know I'm free for you need me and guide me in the shadows of your wings shadows of your wings I know I am safe in the shadows of your wings I find relief for you will hold me and you guide me with your righteous hands I find rest peace of mind the shadow of your wings let me sing in the shadows of your wings in the shadow of your wings i know i'm saying i know i am saying in the shadow of your wings in the shadow of your wings lord i find release i find release for you will hold me and you guide me with your righteous hand with your righteous You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You listen to that? In our daily challenges, you need to find enough calm. You need to find what? To think clearly and react diligently. Not Summit to panic. Challenge we are facing is just this. Our heart is not in one accord with our mouth. And when our heart is not in one accord with our mouth, whom are we talking to? It is when our heart is in one accord with our mouth, then we can bring Jesus on the scene. Then we can bring the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Father, into our heart. When we say, Jesus, our heart is not in one accord with our mouth. Amen. Our heart is not in one accord with our mouth. Hallelujah. Our heart is not in one accord with our mouth. So can you see? Oh, what we are doing. Ask your neighbor, did you pray for the situation you are in today? Did you? Did you confess the situation you are in today? 
that is what we have been saying. What you have been saying in the name of Jesus is not such in heart. What you have been saying in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, amen, amen, every day is not such in hearts. So this is what I mean, that our heart is not in one accord with our mouth when it comes to God's word. Speak the name of Jesus. Chat in the name of Jesus. Our heart is not in one accord. With our mouths. Did you pray for this situation you are facing today? This means what you have been saying in the name of Jesus is not such in hearts. It's not such in hearts. No, it's not such in hearts. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless me. Father, give me this. Father, give me that. What you are saying is different from what is in your heart. We begin to bring Jesus on the scene, or bring the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Father, into our heart when what we are saying is in one accord with our heart. Like I have said, as I look at true believers, I do not forget the many insults, persecution, hatred, temptation, the opposition they endure to maintain their Christian life. I salute them. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight or we have to guide. We have to hold up a savior's banner. We got to hold it up until we die. We are soldiers. We are soldiers in the army. In the army. Yeah. We have to fight or we have to guide. We have to hold up a savior's banner. We have to hold it up until we die. We are soldiers. We are soldiers in the army. In the army. We have to fight or we have to die. We have to hold up a savior's banner. We have to hold it up until we die. All the soldiers in the house, let me see your hands up. One more time. We are soldiers in the army. We have to You may be sitting. You listen to that. As I look at true believers, 
I do not forget the many insults, persecution, hatred, temptation, the opposition they endure to maintain their Christian life, to walk with the Lord. Anything close to Jesus receives attack. These challenges force us to look deeper. Tell your neighbor, these challenges force us to look deeper. Say to your neighbor what he does not want to hear and see what will happen. Okay, say to your neighbor, your mouth is mine. This challenge is force us to look what? To look deeper. Explore possibilities. Explore possibilities. Increase our desire and our determination for God. Pray and dream of other ways that might have been ignored. I say the value in crisis, value in the challenges. They just say to your neighbor, hey, please, you are smiling. I see what your neighbor will tell you that he's not a Christian. By, by what you say, you know he's not a Christian, but now he's a Christian. Tell your neighbor, now you are a Christian. Let challenges come and see whether you are a Christian. These challenges force us to look well, deeper. Tomorrow, just look for your best friend. Give him a test. Just come and say, ha, ah, I never knew you are a thief. I'm a thief, I'm a thief, I'm a thief, I'm taking you to the court. Ah, uh, my brother, God, it's not like that. Challenge first us to look deeper. I never knew you are not my friend. Without being tested as a Christian, our genuineness cannot be determined. Tell your neighbor, your genuineness cannot be determined without being tested. Test by what? By joy? By food? By blessing? By breakthrough? What is that test? Tell your neighbor, without being tested, as a true believer, your genuineness cannot be determined. You are not here today because of miracle you have seen so far. You are not here today because of a prophecy God is using me to perform. No, you are not here because of a the crusade all over the world. You are here because after sitting down, ah, what this man have gone through is a is man of God. No human being has gone through that and succeed. You listen to me? You are not here because of the miracle. You are not here because of prophecy or what you have seen on the man of TV so far. You are here after sitting down and say, ha, ah, it's not a human being. The man is a spirit. <laughs> Without being tested, tell your neighbor, as a Christian, your genuineness cannot be determined. As a believer, we must understand that when times 
are stable. And the sea is calm and secure. No one is really tested. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, listen to that, listen to that. I will so. Visited. Yes, we must understand that when times are stable and the sea is calm and secure, no one is really tested. Because many abandon their faith because of challenges. Many running hectares scatter. Devil get people to their side because of trouble. When the trouble comes, devil will say to you, can you see? You say you are serving God. Can you see? Where is your God? God of crisis? God of challenges? God of tribulation? God of stagnation? God of joblessness? Where is that God? In contrast, Poverty, hardship, sickness, disease, stagnation, just name them, and so on and so forth, force us to come face to face with who we really are and what we can become. Tell your neighbor, apply yourself to your duty. Apply yourself. Apply yourself to your work as a Christian soldier. I can hear you. Apply yourself to your duty. Apply yourself to your work as a Christian soldier. What do I mean? Match your action with your word. If you want to succeed in life. 
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Apply yourself to your duty. Apply yourself to your war as a Christian soldier. I mean, match your action with your word. Your action is different from your word. The action is heart. The word is mouth. Your heart is different from your mouth. That is why your life is like this. You find yourself in a situation you are today because your heart is different from your mouth. Match your action with your word. Tell your neighbor. In Jesus' name, this is it. This is it. Are you what you are saying? Amen. You mean it? Amen. Jesus may be here. You mean what you are saying? Match your action with your word. Mean apply yourself to your duty. Apply yourself to your word as a Christian soldier. They were thank you for your time. Now you know your position when it comes to challenges. You know your position when it comes to temptation. You now know your position as a Christian when it comes to tribulation. Now you know your position when it comes to stagnation. You know your position when it comes to temptation. Here you are. Temptation challenges are your friends. It is time now you begin to see the value in the challenge. See the value in the situation that looks impossible. There is value there. I'm a good example. Here I am. Those of you that were crying for me last in the past, now you can say, cry no more. You never knew my position was not the mind for crying. Your sickness is to force you to look deeper. Look deeper when sickness comes. When hardship comes, look deeper. Whatever you are facing, look deeper. It is time to explore possibilities. It increases our desire and our determination for God. Pray and dream of other way. That might have 
ignore. I bless you. Thank you. Thank you.